Hey y'all, <laughs> Data Guy here. And today I am here with a guy video uh, that was actually yet another viewer request video, uh, expanding my comparison of uh, Flink, Apache Flink, and Kafka, Apache Kafka, to also include Spark and Storm as well. Um, so I'm gonna be doing this in a similar structure. We're gonna first go over the architectural overview of how these uh, four model or these four tools are deployed. Then we'll talk about how you develop with each of these tools before wrapping up with the pros and cons of using each tool and also what they're best suited for. What are their best use cases so that you have an idea of, hey, I have a particular use case. This is the best tool for that use case because you should always be use case focused. Don't just try to use a tool because it's hot and trendy and you're seeing it everywhere. Got to make sure you do the groundwork first. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So first we have Apache Kafka. Uh, and Apache Kafka is a distributed streaming platform that's really focused on real-time data pipelines and event-driven architectures where a, it, it follows a publish and subscribe model where applications act as either producers or consumers of data streams. And producers are responsible for publishing data to Kafka topics, which are essential, essentially logical units uh, containing you know, data that's emitted from a certain set of producers. And then each topic is divided into partitions, which now enables Kafka to scale horizontally and then also handle the high throughput message traffic by distributing that data across multiple brokers. Consumers then subscribe to those topics to retrieve data, which provides them with access to real time and historical streams. And then Kafka brokers coordinate message distribution and ensure the durability of each partition. Um, and also something to know is an essential component of Kafka's architecture is Apache Zookeeper, which is actually the tool that's handling the coordination tasks like managing the metadata and leader election to say, hey, what node is going to actually do perform this data process. Now, Apache Flink is designed as a stream processing platform, strictly streaming with a strong emphasis on stateful and event time processing. And Flink's architecture centers around a job manager that coordinates the execution of data streams and then task managers, which perform the actual computation. So the job manager oversees resource allocation, fault tolerance, checkpointing, taking snapshots of data. And then task managers break down tasks into smaller parallel operators, which allows efficient scaling. Flink distinguishes itself through its advanced state management capabilities and also its ability to achieve exactly one state processing. And then also Flink's architecture provides native support for event time processing, which is really essential for handling data that arise late or, or out of order. Now, Apache Spark is a unified analytics engine for large scale data processing. It's really designed to be fast, general purpose, and its architecture consists of a driver program that orchestrates parallel operations on a cluster of worker nodes. And the core component of Spark's architecture is the resilient distributed database an immutable distributed collection of objects that can be processed in parallel. Spark supports both batch processing and also stream processing through its Spark streaming module, which operates on many batches of data. It's also, its execution model is based on DAGs, uh, directed acyclic graphs scheduling for fault tolerance and efficient task execution, just like Airflow. And it also integrates pretty seamlessly with other storage systems. Uh, you know, the old school one is Hadoop, um, but you'll definitely see, uh, you know, pretty much any storage system you can hook into Spark. Now, Apache Storm, similar to uh, uh, Kafka, actually also uses Apache Zookeeper um, and acts as a real-time processing system designed for low latency computation. And its architecture is composed of spouts and bolts, which together form a topology. And you can kind of see an example of this here, where spouts are responsible for ingesting data streams, while bolts process and transform the data. And then the coordination of spouts and bolts is managed by this Nimbus master node, which, contribute, which distributes code and assigns tasks, and then supervisors, which manage worker nodes that execute the actual processing tasks. Storm emphasizes real-time processing with millisecond level latency, so it's really suitable for applications that require near instantaneous data processing and analysis. So now that you have a high level view of each of these tools, I want to start talking about their development model. So Flink really, or Kafka, sorry, or no, no, Flink, offers a comprehensive set of APIs tailored for specific use cases in stream processing. Uh, and the primary one is the data stream API, which is the primary model for transforming and analyzing data streams, providing high level abstractions for windowing, aggregations, and event time processing. Their SQL API allows developers to write SQL queries that run directly on top of streams and offer a familiar interface for people that are accustomed to uh, tra traditional rela relational databases. 
Um, and Flink's stateful processing model supports exactly once consistency through keyed state, operator state, and timers, giving you really precise control over the application state. And also, the Flix com Flink's complex event processing library adds powerful pattern recognition capabilities that further simplify the identification of specific event sequences within streams. Now, Kafka, on the other hand, provides different APIs for, the facil for facilitating the development of different applications for both message streaming and data processing. So the producer and consumer APIs really form the backbone of Kafka's data ingestion and consumption processes, which allows developers to publish or subscribe to messages and topics. The Kafka Streams API then builds upon those basic concepts, enabling the creation of more sophisticated streaming applications that can read from one or more Kafka topics, process that data, and then write the results to other topics. Additionally, the Kafka Connect API provides also a standard way of integrating external data systems with pre-built connectors for databases, you can kind of see up here, uh, file systems, and other data sources as well. Now, Spark also provides a variety of APIs to accommodate different data processing needs. So the core API is the RDD API, which provides a functional programming model for batch processing. And then the Spark, or Spark also includes data, data frame and data set APIs, which provide high level abstractions for interacting with structured data processing. And then that, they also layer optimizations from the Catalyst Query Optimizer on top of that as well. Spark Streaming then extends those capabilities to handle real-time data streams using a micro batch processing model. Developers can also use Spark SQL for SQL-based data processing and machine learning libraries for building scalable machine learning applications. And the unified nature of Spark's API allows for seamless transitions between batch and stream processing. Now finally, with Apache Storm, it's the only one that actually isn't super based around APIs, but still based around APIs. And also, the reason why I'm just talking about the APIs here is because every one of these programs, you can interact with it via you know, Python via, uh, you know, whatever kind of, typically via some kind of script. But a lot of the actions you're taking are really just wrapping an API command with certain parameters and then sending that into the Spark cluster, saying, hey, you know, take this data set, process it, and give me an output. Um, because with streaming and, and batch processing, everything's really event driven. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm talking about APIs here. Um, just so you have an idea of, hey, like, this is what their APIs actually do and what, therefore, what the applications actually do, since an API is just an application programming interface. Um, so Spark's developed model, again, revolves around spouts and bolts, uh, where spouts are the sources of data streams, bolts are processing units, and then you define the topology and flow of data between spouts and bolts using directed acyclic graphs similar to Airflow or Spark. And then Storm's API provides a straightforward interface for defining those topologies and handling tuple-based message passing. Or passing. Um, the real-time processing capabilities of Spark also make it suitable for applications that you know, require immediate data processing, low latency responses, things where you know, everything needs to happen instantaneously. Um, so now that we've gone through the develop model, basics of each type, let's rank them. Let's do some pros and cons. So starting off with Apache Flink, so in terms of pros and cons, Apache Flink really shines with its first class support for event time sem semantics, allowing accurate processing events that occur out of order or late and it's exactly one semantics ensure consistent state management across the entire pipeline. So it's really critical and really good for applications that require super strict reliability. The flexible API ecosystem also provides various abstractions suitable for different applications like you know, APIs for low latency analytics or APIs for complex pattern recognition. Um, but on the downsides, Flink really requires careful tuning and configuration to optimize the performance of the job and task managers and it makes its operational overhead higher than simpler systems might be. Its advanced API top concepts also demand a steeper learning curve, especially for some people that might be new to stream processing. Uh, you really need to get in deep with it first. Apache Kafka, uh, on the other hand, is a robust streaming platform that handle, excels in scalability, performance, and integration capabilities. Its partition-based model allows it to handle large message volumes by distributing data across many different brokers, and that provides horizontal scalability. Also offers high throughput message handling and can score, store logs durably, so it makes it an ideal choice for event sourcing, log aggregation, and metrics collection. Um, but managing Kafka clusters can be quite challenging due, the, due to the complexity of coordinating brokers and also needing to leverage and set up Apache Zookeeper as well. And then Kafka Streams is still evolving, so it's real-time event processing really isn't as comprehensive as a tool like Flink. Now, next, Apache Spark. 
So Spark is really known for its versatility and powerful data processing capabilities. It's got a unified engine for doing both batch and stream processing, and so it's a popular choice for really any data intensive application. Um, and it's in-memory computing also enhances performance because you can scale it up really quickly. It's got gr it's great for iterative algorithms and machine learning, and it has a rich API set, including things like data frames, data sets, SQL, giving you flexible options for developing and sending data and interacting with Spark. Um, but on the downside, Spark Streaming's micro batch processing model might not be suitable for applications that really need true real-time processing. And Spark's memory consumption can be quite high. Like you really gotta be careful about resource management tuning to make sure you don't just super blow up your bills. Um, so it's really powerful, but you need to kind of you know keep the bull in check. Um, then finally, we have Apache Storm. So Apache Storm offers really impressive low latency processing. It's really best suited for real-time analytics and event processing. Its architecture supports fault tolerant and also highly available processing, ensuring reliable operation even if a component fails. And the simplicity of Storm's spout and bolt model makes it pretty easy to develop and then deploy streaming applications. But on the downside, Storm lacks the rich feature set of more advanced streaming processing tools like Flink. It doesn't natively support things like event time processing or complex stateful operations, which can kind of limit its use cases. And the operational complexity of actually managing Storm clusters and ensuring fault tolerance can also be something of a drawback. And that is four of the most popular data streaming tools ranked, compared, and explained. Um, I hope this has given you kind of a good framework for determining which one is right for your specific use case, uh, because they all kind of have their own little specific niche, even though they might get lumped together a lot. So I hope you found this video interesting. I hope it helps you make an informed decision. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.